In the vast expanse of the Sahara Desert, where life is scarce and the conditions are harsh, a team of scientists have made a discovery that has sent shivers down their spines. What they have uncovered is a chilling mystery that has the potential to upend our understanding of the world as we know it. The discovery is so significant that it has left scientists reeling, struggling to comprehend the full implications of what they have found. The discovery is a dark secret that has been buried for millennia, hidden beneath the shifting sands of the Sahara. But as the scientists delve deeper into the mystery, they realize that what they have found is much more than just a historical artifact. Let's take a look at it. Evidence of a prehistoric mega lake has been found by geologists buried deep within the dunes of the Sahara Desert. The Nile River burst through a low channel in Wadi Tushka approximately 250,000 years ago, flooding the eastern Sahara and creating a lake that, at its highest level, covered more than 42,000 square miles. While analyzing radar data of Egypt that was collected by the Space Shuttle Radar Topography Mission, geologist Ted Maxwell and his colleagues recently found evidence of the lake. Geologists were able to piece together the topography of an ancient mega lake by using photographs of sediments that were blown by the wind, sediments that were created by running water, and bedrock visible by radar beneath the sands of the desert. The high aridity of Egypt makes it easier for radar to discern distinct features underneath the surface of the country. Up to 50 feet below the surface of the desert, buried channels can be uncovered with the proper equipment. Oasis of Kisaiba, located in southern Egypt. This oasis can be found along an ancient waterway that was uncovered by geologists using data obtained from the Space Shuttle Topographic Mission. The current depth of the water below the surface ranges from 6.5 to 9.5 feet. This oasis was only recently tilled up to make way for melons to be grown. The researchers estimate that the Nile once inundated the entire Kasaiba Tushka Depression in Egypt, resulting in the creation of the massive lake. The fossil fish were discovered in deposits located approximately 250 miles west of the Nile and at an elevation of 810 feet above sea level as a marker of the lake's highest shoreline. According to the findings of the researchers, the locations of the Paleolithic human settlements in Egypt between the areas of Salima and Tarfawi correlate to a lake that covers approximately 42,000 square miles. This places the Paleolithic human colonies in regions that would have been ideal because they were near water. A second lower level of the lake may have existed at a height of 623 feet above sea level, as suggested by the position and elevation of a different series of archaeological sites near Bir Kasiba, which is located approximately 93 miles west of the Nile. This lake may have covered an area of approximately 18,600 square miles. The elevation of the Tushka Channel, which the water of the Nile previously flowed through on its way into the desert, was also utilized as a base level by the geologists when they were calculating the size of the second lake. According to the researchers, the discovery of these lakes adds to the mounting evidence that multiple early and middle Pleistocene lakes existed over North Africa. These lakes may have supported human movement patterns during these periods. Their findings were detailed in an article titled Evidence for Pleistocene Lakes in the Tushka Region, South Egypt, which was featured in the Geology Journal's December 2010 issue under the heading Geology. In a river system that once flowed in what is now the Sahara Desert in Morocco, fossils of miniature plesiosaurs have been discovered. Plesiosaurs were marine reptiles with long necks that lived during the time of dinosaurs. This finding raises the possibility that some species of plesiosaurs, which have previously been thought of as marine creatures, may have lived in freshwater environments. Plesiosaurs were extinct marine reptiles that had small heads, long necks, and four long flippers. The first specimen of a plesiosaur was discovered in 1823 by fossil hunter Mary Anning. They were the source of inspiration for artists who recreated the Loch Ness Monster, yet contrary to popular belief, plesiosaurs were marine animals. At least it's how most people understood them to have lived. Now researchers from the Universities of Bath and Portsmouth in the United Kingdom, as well as Université Hassan in Morocco, have reported the discovery of small plesiosaurs from a river in Africa that dates back to the Cretaceous period. The fossils include bones and teeth from adults measuring 3 meters in length, as well as an arm bone from a juvenile measuring 1.5 meters in length. They provide evidence that these animals lived and fed in freshwater regularly alongside other animals such as frogs, crocodiles, turtles, fish, and the enormous aquatic dinosaur Spinosaurus. 
These fossils provide evidence that plesiosaurs were able to survive in freshwater and may have even spent their entire lives there, similar to how river dolphins live their lives today. Georgina Bunker, a student at the University of Bath, served as the lead author of the new article, which was also co-authored by Nick Longrich of the Milner Center for Evolution at the University of Bath. David Martill and Roy Smith of the University of Portsmouth and Samir Zouri at the University Hassan in Morocco. The fossils consist of vertebrae from the neck, back, and tail of the animal, as well as teeth that have been shed and an arm bone from a young juvenile. It's scrappy stuff, but isolated bones tell us a lot about ancient ecosystems and the animals that lived in them, said the author of the article. According to Dr. Nick Longrich, they are so much more common than skeletons and they give you more information to work with. Researchers from the University of Johannesburg think that Hypatia, a stone that was discovered in the Sahara Desert in 1992, could be the first concrete evidence of a supernova-type explosion. This is the type of star explosion that is one of the most energetic events that can occur anywhere in the universe. The researchers have pieced together a timeline of Hypatia's genesis that dates back to the early phases of the formation of the Earth, the Sun, and the other planets in our solar system. They did this by discovering a series of extremely odd indications in the chemical makeup of a little fragment of the stone. These clues allowed them to piece together the timeline, and they believe that the birth of Hypatia may be traced back to the transformation of a red giant star, which is a star in the final stages of its life cycle, into a white dwarf star, which has a mass that ranges from medium to high. After the collapse that would have taken place inside a large dust cloud or nebula, the white dwarf star discovered that it was part of a binary system with another star, orbiting a common center of mass. This occurred after the collapse that would have taken place inside the nebula. The hungry white dwarf star finally ate the other star, and at some point it burst, causing an explosion of the sort known as a supernova type 1A within the nebula. As soon as the process of cooling was through, gas atoms which were left over from the explosion of a supernova type 1A began to cling to the particles that made up the nebula, and this led to the formation of Hypatia's parent rock. At some time, it started hurtling toward our planet, but the heat of entry into Earth's atmosphere, along with the pressure of impact in the Great Sand Sea in southwestern Egypt, broke Hypatia's parent rock. And this led to the separation of Hypatia from the parent rock. Explorers are now able to see beneath the canopies of the thickest jungles and reach the heart of the most inhospitable deserts, all without even having to get out of their chairs. This is made possible by satellite technology. The remnants of more than 100 fortifications belonging to the Garamantis people of Libya were discovered by satellites in the year 2010. Because the oil industry had done a thorough job of mapping the area in their hunt for suitable locations to drill, archaeologists were able to examine satellite images to look for telltale evidence of walls. Later, scholars on the ground were able to prove that the constructions had actually been built by the Garamantes, despite the fact that their trips were cut short by the revolution in Libya that overthrew Colonel Gaddafi. When the Garamantes were at the height of their civilization, which occurred between the 2nd century BC and 7th century AD, the environment in which they lived was already extremely dry. In order to cultivate their land, they dug underground canals that led to ancient reservoirs and filled those channels with water. As a result of the loss of this water source, the fields wilted and the Sahara Desert eventually covered the ruins of the strongholds and communities. The Tethys Ocean used to cover the area that is now the Sahara Desert, making it one of the driest locations on Earth. Today, the vestiges of this ancient ocean may be found in Wadi al-Hitan, Egypt's Whale Valley, which may seem like the most improbable spot to look for them. This location is a veritable treasury for the discovery of whale fossils, which provide a peek into the transition of these gigantic beasts from mammals that lived on land to those that lived in the sea. The skeletons of whales, some of which measure up to 15 meters or 50 feet in length, have been preserved for millions of years by being buried in the sand and rocks here. However, paleontologists are interested in more than just whales. They've also unearthed the teeth of big and dangerous sharks that once lived in the Tethys Ocean. As researchers delve further into the mysteries of this long-lost world, they keep their fingers crossed that they'll find out more about how life first began on our planet. There have always been monstrous creatures living in the oceans. Machamosaurus rex, a crocodile that measured 9 meters or 30 feet in length, called the area that is now the Sahara Desert its home around 120 million years ago. It's believed that the M. rex was the largest marine-dwelling crocodile that ever lived. It's likely that the region where Imrex previously called home was a large lagoon that extended to the Tethys Ocean. It was able to break the shells of sea turtles and seize fish thanks to its enormous head, amazing bite strength, and short, incredibly sharp teeth in that environment. 
It's also possible that it scavenged for food among the dead bodies of larger animals that inhabited its habitat at the time. It might appear strange that the paleontologists are finding so many fossils of marine life in the Sahara Desert, but the fact is there actually are because the desert is so unfriendly to life. Scientists are often able to just walk through eroding places to pick up astonishing findings since there are no plants or soil to come in the way between them and the rocks that are beneath them. That's all for today's video, but we'll be back with more soon. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, and thanks for watching.